Mark, thanks for the invitation to site today. We, we've come here to talk to you about uh, your machining processes and most importantly, your, your CAD CAM solutions or the, the provider that you uh, use. Why did you select OpenMind and their Hypermill software to start with? If you could tell us a little bit about that story. Um, a company I used to work for done a very uh, systematic method of testing uh, different types of uh, CAD CAM and they chose Hypermill and I was very impressed with the method that they used. They, um, they got a, what, about three, they narrowed it down to three different systems and then they tested them thoroughly and Hypermill come out the best. How would they have tested them by actually doing a job with them, you know, make, making a part and the machining process, the, the programming process, the whole lot? Yes, they actually made the parts, they had the, the time it took to make the part, the time it took to um, program the part and then the quality of the part. And so they're taking those three things into consideration. That's how they chose the, the software. And that's how they chose Hypermill. So for you then, kind of the backstory of Goodman Precision, did you set up this company not so long ago? Yes, only about seven years ago. Right, so you came, came from that, your former employer set up Goodman Precision. Was, was one of your first investments a CAM solution? That was, the, yeah, definitely. And it was Hypermill straight away, yeah. It's interesting because sometimes we go to engineering companies, they might have been founded in the 70s and they're still struggling to kind of comprehend the, 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 the CAM solution, but you went straight into it. Yeah, I actually, I think I actually purchased it before I even got a unit. So, And, and this is the type of part you're doing here, isn't it? I mean, this is something that you would have pro programmed using Hypermill, correct? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, this is a Formula 1 component. And when it comes to programming a part like this, how long would it have taken you or one of your guys to actually, um, and how could you have done this without something like Hypermill? Yeah, there's other systems you could use, but I would say Hypermill is the best. And this would take something like a couple of days to program, and then it's probably got something like a six hour run time, something like that. So I've now relocated into the CAD office. I'm with Paul Gould, and we're gonna talk about uh, how you actually go about generating a program for a component. So Paul, uh, just very briefly, tell us your experience with um, the Hypermill software. How long have you been using it? Uh, approximately seven years, I'd say, yeah. And did you bring it from, a, or you were using it in a uh, previous company because you just yes, relocated yes, to... Uh, in my previous job, I was using it there for sort of four years. And then, um, yeah, when I came here, it was um, quite convenient that it was the same software, so I could just, like jump straight into the job here. So, yeah, that was uh, very convenient for me. And uh, So tell us from start to finish how you go about creating a part like this. Um, well, first off, uh, you'd be given like a CAD model from like the customer. It would come like this, yeah? It would come exactly in this kind of format. Um, and then all they would provide you with is a drawing with all the limits and tolerances over that that they need to provide that part out of, which could be like they're including materials. Um, but this part, for example, I'd load straight into the, our, our software. So you take the CAD model, take it into our software, and then you literally just generate um, your stock around it. So you know you think, right, what stock am I going to put around that? And then you would put on a vice. You know, so you're working out from the machine, you know, where, which orientation you're going to hold it in. And just for example, we'd um, put some tool paths over that. Um, so we could, well, firstly, we're gonna, we've got, got our billet now because we've created um, uh, our billet around the, around the finished part or the finished drawing. We've got our vise, we've put the billet in the vise, we've done that. H how quickly? Um, you can do that fairly quickly. You know, you can just like do like a bounding geometry of it. It tells you how big that part is. And you can put, like, say, 10 mil of stock around each side of that, that part. And then, uh, then basically all you're going to do is be taking it away again. So you would have something that would look something like this. You know, this had a prep on this one just to bring the jaws in closer, which would help with uh, the final parts of that operation. But you would get some sort of simulation. This is just a roughing cycle. So this is like, you no, know, it's all roughing out within a boundary, and it's just leaving, you know, half a millimeter on all the surfaces that it can see. And is it, doing, is it creating this program as a result of knowing what the finished part is compared to what the material stock is in the vise? Yeah, no, exactly. So it will generate a new stock model. So each time you uh, run one cycle, it will now generate a new stock model, which you can use for the next part of machining. So this is um, more of like a roughing cycle, but then you can get more into um, you know, the finalizing, uh, finishing parts using different cycles. What about the optimizing of this if you had a, it I mean, it must depend on what spindle speed you've got, what sort of machine tool you've got. How do you go about making sure that this is accommodating for those factors? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, you've got um, the different materials are gonna make um, you know, a lot of difference, you know, because we do aluminium, titanium, but you know, some more exotic materials are going to take a lot longer than a part which is made out of aluminium. 
So the different sort of like selection of cutters would be needed uh, to do that. But the software can help you with those factors. Oh yeah, yeah. There's uh, the cycles that will like uh, help with roughing, especially with uh, things like titanium. Um, there's a different sort of uh, approach and how those cutters would uh, actually cut. So, but with aluminium, you can speed things a lot, lot faster, and you can generate a part fairly quickly, which sometimes we could even test if we were going to make a titanium part. We may test it in aluminium first just to see the final component and then like, no, adjust the program to, um, for titanium. What about the collision here? Is there any, any risks in this? Yes. Uh, well, you can put all the machine model in here. So um, exactly what we're seeing here is exactly what would happen in the machine. Um, but what I can put in here in, into my uh, software, I can put in the vice, uh, extra things as well. I may have a table here somewhere on this one. Uh, fixture, no, that's not that one. But there'd be parts on this where I could have the table, I could have the entire machine in there. So um, I'll select those surfaces. So if any of my cutters hit any of those parts uh, from something, I may have uh, done a mistake in the program, then it would alarm up here first before it goes to the machine. And once we've created or we've done the machining and we've seen the cycle going through, what about the tooling side of things? How do you go about selecting the tools uh, and then taking that to the machine tool. How does all that work? Yeah, sure. Well, um, recently, we've uh, gone to consignment, which helps a lot with uh, things. We'd have a, a tool library within the software. Um, so within, uh, if I wanted to select you know, a ball nose end mill for consignment, we've now like put them under subcategories under consignment. And uh, you know, you may want a two flute alley ball nose or something like that with diamond coating. And we can literally select the tool from our software which will give the part number uh, of the actual tool to, so um, we can order those parts through consignment, and as we use them, they will be replenished, so that uh, helps uh, you know, a great deal. Okay, now c come back to yeah. the part. That, that is, uh, I'm glad I asked that question, because that's, um, that's, that's a very, very efficient way of doing it. Coming back to this part then, let's give me an example of how long this would take you, from, from where we started to when we're finished and we're, we're, we're post-processing the program into the machine. Yeah, I mean, this, type, this sort of, uh, job I'd probably spend uh, about maybe 10 hours programming this one just making sure I've got everything right um, sometimes it can be a lot quicker just depending on you know the detail of the part um, but there may be more detail on some parts than others so looking at this uh, with the fixtures that need to be made and programmed too um, oh yeah I'd say probably about 10 hours I could do that in and what about the surface finish I mean again some sometimes surface finishes are critical and sometimes they're not how, how do you cater for that um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, with the surfacing, it's all done with, like, a ball nose cutter, so it more uh, steps over as, um, you know, 0.1 of a millimetre for a good finish. And if you wanted to produce the part a lot faster, then you could step over 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a millimetre, depending on the requirement of the part, so, yeah. And is there much to be done at the machine once this is posted to it? Do you, I mean, I did ask Mark this question, and he basically said, as soon as that goes into the machine, you run the part, job done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what uh, we do is we create like a setup sheet for example this is one I'm working on at the moment so this is uh, you create a setup for the f for the operators and the setters out in the workshop and they would follow this uh, and f also um, I have a tooling sheet which would also be pr printed straight out the software which will tell those tools the holders to use uh, the tool positions to put them in and uh, by doing that you know they they can now set the datum in the machine with the billet which would have the, that all on the paperwork too you know the billet size and they can put those tools in those positions, and then all they'll probably need to do after that is just offset cutters, so and, and boss set, set boring bars. Yeah. When when the finished program comes out of the the cam system and it's posted to the machine, is there any optimising you do at the machine, or do you fully trust in the fact that this that the cam solution is giving you the best and the fastest production method? Yeah, there's no optimising at the machine. We don't even program that anything simple at the machine, everything's done CAD, CAD CAM. I think what is also interesting here as well is you have a variety of machine tools. You've got your Quasar, your Herco, your, your, your Mazax, and they've all got different control systems. That's quite unusual. Most companies tend to, might have different brands of machines, but they'll stick to either the Hayden Haynes or their Fanux. Yeah. Is, that, is that not something you've ever worried about? No, no. The main thing is that because you're producing everything on the CAD CAM, Obviously, you've only got to change a post-processor and you can produce a program for any of the machines. We are quite often run uh, the same parts on different machines at different times, so it just really doesn't matter. So, and, and if there was another engineer out there watching this thinking, well, can I invest in a hypermill solution? I think it's too expensive for me. It might cost me a lot of money. What sort of payback would you say uh, you got from having that system? And, you know, 
by buying Hypermill, how quickly did you get a return on the investment? Oh, very quickly. The, one of the things was it wasn't too expensive compared to other ones on the market. And secondly, um, obviously, we haven't had to change to a different one as we've progressed. We had one of the best, or the best, right from the beginning.